All right, what's up, everybody? Back with another edition of Every Day Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be talking about the Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals from yesterday. Celtics, Heat. What a game. Very interesting game, of course. At the spot for the NBA Finals on the line. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you like the content around here, you know, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, so stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It helps in a lot. Looking at the analytics, about a little bit less than 1% of you that actually watch the videos are to actually subscribed. So, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it a whole lot. And yeah, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So, last night, game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. Boston, Miami, in Boston, Miami, looking to finally punch their ticket to the NBA Finals, while the Celtics looking to make history as the first team ever to come back from down 3 nothing. Uh, in this game. Michael Brogdon also was playing in this game for Boston. He didn't play in the last game. He plays today. The Heat go with their same starting line. Keep Caleb Martin in there. And the first possession of the game, J.C. Tatum goes to the rim, draws a foul on Gabe Vincent, comes down and twists his ankle the very first play and it, it was just crazy like that really set the tone of the entire game i was just like whoa jc Tatum's already hurt he did play the rest of the game obviously but just a very crazy thing to have it on the first play you could tell throughout the game that he put definitely wasn't himself tried to get to some moves even on defense he wasn't really moving on defense he was just kind of standing in one place guarding the corner trying not to put too much pressure on that ankle but shout out to him for playing the entirety of the game like, like as if he was healthy or at least trying to play. And the Celtics got off to a 7-2 start. You know, very solid. Miami still missing some shots. Uh, but Caleb, Caleb Martin, man. Caleb Martin gave Vincent as well in this first quarter. We're just on fire, you know. Uh, the Celtics were very cold from three. They are getting some decent looks and getting a lot of offensive rebounds. Just couldn't make any shots from long distance in Miami. Was just being aggressive. You know, Max Schuess hit a three-pointer. That was big. Jimmy Butler got to the rim and got some late. was big as well. Miami led 22-15 to 15 at the end of the first quarter. Very, yeah, very sloppy first quarter from both sides. But yet to the second quarter, Miami starts to try to run it up. The bench comes in. Duggar Robson hits a couple shots. Kyle Lowry starts hitting some shots. It's very big because he hasn't really been great all series. Caleb Martin hits another three-pointer. Celtics again missing threes, turning the ball over. And all of a sudden, Miami led 31 28 in the second quarter. But then Boston fights their way back. Robert Williams, I, lo- I loved Robert Williams' minutes this entire series. He was just a menace down in the paint. You know, getting offensive rebounds, easy layups, block shots. He was great. Uh, he didn't play that much because the Celtics loved their spacing and stuff. And Robert Williams is in foul trouble a little bit in some games. But Boston, Robert Williams, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. With, with some shots here and there, Derek White, they start to try to cut into the lead a little bit, you know, especially near the end of the half, but Miami closes out well. They lead 52-41 to 41 going into halftime. Meanwhile, Jimmy and Bam aren't having... Jimmy's having a good game. Bam's still not having a great game. But really, it was Caleb Martin. You know, Caleb Martin had 14 in the first half. He was great. Uh, even guys like Gabe Vincent were getting involved. Dr. Robinson here and there. And for Boston, it was really tough because the three-point shot was falling. We go to the third. And it's basically kind of the same thing going on. You know, Jimmy was hitting threes. That was big. Um, Caleb Martin hitting, like, turnaround fades and stuff like that, which was crazy. I don't know what came over him, but he was hitting shots. Uh, Boston's three started to fall a little bit more. Derek White. Derek White was big. Derek White was literally going one-on-one. They literally started running their offense to Derek White because Jalen Brown was having was starting to miss shots. Jason Tatum, of course, with his ankle. So Derek White was literally just driving to the rim. Trying to go one on one with people, and it was great to see. You know, where would Boston be without Derek White? I tweeted that because wow, I mean, he was really good. Cut the lead all the way down to seven a few times, but then Miami closed out the quarter solid. Caleb Martin hits another three pointer, then hits a fit- turnaround. He came, go went under the basket, came on the other side, hit a fadeaway jumper to go up by ten at the end of the three quarters, and then we get to the fourth. Caleb Martin hits a three pointer to start the fourth quarter. Jimmy. But back-to-back shots, and all of a sudden, Miami blows the game open. I mean, Kyle Lowry starts hitting pull-ups. Tucker Robson's hitting threes and looking at the crowd. Um, it's just Miami really just blows the game open. Boston just is trying, but Boston just kind of folds a little bit in that fourth quarter. 
um, just pulling random three pointers they're missing, turn the ball over, um, stop trying kind of on defense. There's some plays where they just kind of let Miami get an easy layup. Miami outscores Boston 27 18 in the fourth quarter, and Miami wins 103 to 84, defeating the Celtics in seven, not making the wrong side of history, but instead making right history, the first ever play in team to make a finals appearance. Looking at the Stats, Miami shoots 49% of the field. Boston shot just 39%. Boston shot 32 for 82 on the field. And then three-point shooting, Miami was 50% from three, 14 for 28. Boston was nine for 42 from three. The last two games combined, they hit 16 threes. Very bad shooting from them. Uh, Miami forced 15 Boston turnovers. Miami also had eight more assists, two more rebounds as well. And they just played better. Boston just was bad. Not hitting shots. They weren't as locked in defensively as they were the last three games. The intensity and energy levels weren't these, the same. And Miami Miami came out hungry and fought all the way to the end. And they won this game. Looking at stats, Jimmy Butler. Big bounce back after having two pretty subpar games. 28-7-6 with three steals. He shot 12 for 28, 3 for 7 for 3. He was named Eastern Conference Finals MVP, which I expected. But still, man, I don't know. If Caleb Martin, that's Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin should have got Easter Conference Finals MVP, man. And Caleb Martin in this game, game seven, 26 and 10, 11 for 16, 4 for 6 and 3. He was just, he was insane. I mean, at some points, I was like, is this even Caleb Martin anymore? Like, this dude, he was getting buckets. He was going one on one, driving to the rear of people, hitting fadeaway jumpers, consistently hitting threes. Of course, you know, the energy on defense and the rebounding is going to be there. Just a beautiful series. From Caleb Martin. Uh, probably got some more money in his pocket after this series. Uh, Bam, 12, 10, and 7. Uh, shot just 4 for 10. Not a great Bam game when you looked at it. Statistically, it looked good. But when you're looking at it, Bam has to be a lot better going to the finals. Uh, then Gabe Vincent and Duncan Robson each had 10 points as well. Kyle Ari also had 7, 7, and 5 off the bench. And just, yeah, a great game for Miami. They came out with energy. They came out, they hit the shots that they needed to hit. Jimmy was a lot better. Caleb Martin providing a lot. Guys like Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, Kyle Lowry providing little sparks when they needed him to. Uh, they're locked in defensively. They forced turnovers, moving the ball around. Just They're all around just better in this game than Boston. And now they're going to the NBA Finals, man. That is insane. They were literally like three minutes away from missing out in the playoffs entirely in their last playing game against the Bulls. 345, they're down by three. And now they're going to be in the NBA Finals. Like, how insane. Just a, a, an insane run from this team. You know, losing the first playing game at home. Second playing game going down to the wire, and then all of a sudden pulling out at the end. We go, You go against the number one team in the NBA, the Bucks, Beat them in five. Go against a tough, gritty New York team that's clicking. Beat them in six. And then go against this Boston Celtic team that was the favorite, basically, to win the championship, and you beat them. Like, it's crazy. Crazy, and they came out and did what they needed to in Game Seven, even though they had pretty bad performances in Game Four, Five, and Six, and were almost on the wrong side of history. They came out and did what they needed to do. They win Game Seven, and now they're going to the NBA Finals. They're playing against the Denver Nuggets, which is going to be an incredibly tough matchup for them. Uh, we're going to talk about that more on Thursday. I'm going to have a video uh, previewing that series. But yeah, shout out to the Miami Heat. You know, for the Celtics, um, just. Didn't they had great energy in game four and five and six? Came out, hit threes, made the big plays we needed to. Defensively, they were really locked in. Chase Sandman and Jalen Brown had amazing games. Guys like Derek White, Marcus Smart contributed a lot. And this game is the exact opposite. You know, the energy wasn't there. Defensively, they were not locked in. Like I seen the last three games, which forced the turnovers and stuff, which is the reason why they were like winning games was. Forcing turnovers, you know, get out of transition, getting easy ones. They weren't doing that, especially in the second half. Uh, the turnovers from themselves were big, and the three point shots. Very, it's very not a secret that if Boston isn't hitting their threes, they're probably not winning their games. And they did, came out today, and they shot nine for forty two from three. Three point shot was not falling. Just a very tough game. Jalen Brown, a lot of conversation about him. Uh, not a great game. Not a great game. 19, 8, and 5. He had 8 turnovers in this game. 5 fouls. She had 8 for 23. And 1 for 9 from 3. Um, during the ball over. Um, basic stuff. A lot of, you know. There's been a lot of conversation the last few years about his dribbling and his ball handling ability. And it came out today. 
that, yeah, it, you saw it last night, you know, ball inability, and then just not consistently hitting shots. That's just this entire series. The first two series, Jalen Brown was one of the most, one of the best players, I feel like, in the playoffs for me. Efficiency, scoring, even though he did have some weird fourth quarter where he didn't really want to shoot the ball. But this series, it was not the same. He had a lot of very poor shooting nights, a lot of turnovers, a lot of games where it was just like the defense wasn't as great. And a lot of conversation because now, because he made all NBA, he's up for a five-year extension worth almost $300 million. And now the big conversation is, do you pay him that money after seeing this performance that he had in this conference finals? Um, and do you trade him? What What's going to happen with that? So I'm going to talk about that a lot more tomorrow. I'm doing another episode of the Look In series on the Boston Celtics where I talk about all of this. So right now I'm just going to talk about the game from yesterday in this series. But tomorrow's video of the Look In, I'm going to talk about the entire Celtics season and their off season as well. Check that out. And yeah, yeah, not a great game for Jalen Brown. Derek White was trying, man. 18 points, shot 5 or 12, hit a couple threes. He's been, he was amazing in the series. And Jason Tatum, 14, 11, and 4. Shot 5 for 13, 1 for 4 from 3. He was injured early in this game. You could definitely tell it was bothering him. Uh, he, but he did play 42 minutes. Um, probably could have done a lot more. There's a lot of times where he just didn't really want the ball because he was just trying to deal with the pain of the ankle. Very tough way for him to go out. But the last three games, 4, 5, and 6, he was amazing. You know, playmaking for others defensively. You know, getting to his spots and hitting shots, getting to the free throw line. But it was just not that in this game. And then the role players didn't really step up as big as well. Marcus Smart was four, was one for six and three. Al Horford hit a couple threes, but he didn't even play a whole lot. Rob, like Robert Williams minutes. Grant Williams hit one shot. Malcolm Brogdon only played seven minutes because his injury. Um, yeah. Just Boston kind of folded at the wrong time. And now they're going home after in a very disappointing season. Uh, last year, being two wins away from the finals, and this year coming out being great all regular season, the favorites out of, to win the championship, and then they fall like this. Like it's in the playoffs, we saw a lot of weaknesses and a lot of things that we didn't see in the regular season. And now it's gonna be a very long off season for Boston. But again, I'm gonna talk a lot a lot more about that tomorrow's video. But yeah, this is a big round of applause for the Miami Heat do what they did this season and now they're moving on yeah that's it for today hope you guys enjoyed this again if you had content right here consider subscribing like turn notifications do all stuff like that i really appreciate it we have said a lot and i will see you guys tomorrow